the original Himalayan uh, shamanic traditions. It's a different form of spiritu spirituality, uh, some sense of original form of spirituality, and some of them has also dark side, and some of them have more light side. And throughout the Himalaya regions, or throughout even around the world, in the shamanic form, there are forms of sacrificing things, which is the dark side of it. And then there are, there are other, other side where are there really like a, a genuine a sense of respect to the nature and the elements, natural elements, and the spirits of the nature. I recently visited Sikkim. And in Sikkim, there is a Lepcha people, which are about uh, I think 100, around 150,000 uh, Lepcha people there. And, uh, and some of the things that I encountered with them was a very interesting experience that I, I thought was that what they were saying, they don't have a temple. Uh, they don't have, a, of course, church or anything like that. They have a little shrines in the individual homes and they have a rocks, feather, and some candles. And the, these symbol, symbol of nature are direct access for them to the spirit, great spirit, to the, to the essence, to, to their great spirit. You know, many other traditions have so much form and images and which represents things, but raw nature, nature are more direct access to the truth or something like that. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, it's true, uh, generally, we have so much forms, which is the, like the door to the truth or to the essence, but they are so minimum and so roar to the nature, to the access of the truth and the spirits, you know. These, some of these Himalayan form of shamanism, um, they don't particularly talk about the ultimate liberation or enlightenment or Buddhahood or something like that. But they do uh, feel like they are more connecting to the source, um, connecting to the great spirit, uh, connecting to the deity, so and through the connection to the nature and these great spirits, they feel like they're gaining a lot of healing powers to heal the understanding of the nature. They're, they're, they're very, very aware of the plants, which plants comes when, and what kind of elemental healing powers they have, when you should take, when you shouldn't take, and so on. There's incredible knowledge is about that. In the burn tradition, we have nine ways of burn. And the first four ways of burn are, it's called causal vehicles. In those causal vehicles, there is a lot of work of elements, spirits, healings, rituals, and um, exorcism. And uh, so there, there are many practices like that, which some of them overlaps with other like shamanic tradition. There might, might be some similarities, but in the burn itself, it doesn't call itself shamanism or like that. We don't, it does not, the word shamanism is not applied in the burn tradition. Work of five element, in its most gross way, like a raw element working, it, it is in the causal vehicles. And if, if you prefer, you can call it like it's similar to other shaman, shamanic work, but again, in Bern, we don't, we don't call Bern, Bern as a sh shamanism. And uh, working with these same elements in its higher form, more like a, a the more form of wind or chi or energy, which, is, which are recognized in our body, so then there is a higher level of practices, more like in a tantrism, in tantric tradition, where through the movement, through the breathing, through the postures, through gaze, you're, you're connecting with a certain elemental energies to 
uh, to bring into the certain state of mind or to influence our mind to bring into the certain state of mind in higher form meditation. So you're still practicing element, but in a different way. Then in highest form, like in a Dzogchen, you're still practicing element in most highest form of the elements, five elements, in its form of light. So white light, blue light, red light, green light, yellow light, it's referred as a five pure lights. So these five pure lights is still the most essential form of five elements, but it's totally linked with a state of awareness, a different state of awareness or different five wisdom, it's called five wisdom. So, so, so when you're practicing with the five wisdom uh, in its highest form of awareness, then you, you're gaining a liberation of rainbow body. So, so use of five element, either it's in a gross form or it's an energetic form or it's highest form as a light. All three are complementary. They're linked to each other. Undeniable connection. That's important because sometimes in Tibetan tradition, it seems like people are less aware of that. So those who are working with the raw element, and they, they think it's like lower or less important or not important or even sometime something bad. Uh, and and so when we're doing more like energetic work on physical like yoga or something like that, or then it's only a physical, but it's not related with the, uh, enhancing higher awareness or something like that. But uh, the real more complete understanding is to understand all these three ways that it's, it's the element in its form, element it's in energy, element it's in the pure form of light. They all complement each other. As a human being, you need to practice all of them together uh, to, to have the best outcome or best result of spiritual development to, to work together. So that's, I think, very unique uh, approach uh, in, in the Bion tradition, and that I think that awareness is very, very strong. And the practice of Chu, like uh, offering your body, practice of soul retrieval, working with the spirit who might have stolen, stolen your soul to retrieve that back, or uh, ransom offering that people, uh, whatever outer forces is like a um, kind of wanting something from you, giving them something what they want. To, to be free from your soul energy, to come back. All these knowledge are there, but in the Bion tradition, we, they don't particularly call it as a shamanism. Uh, in a way, in some time, uh, that uh, the way in the Western world, sometimes shamanism, it's seen as a positive thing. Sometimes it's seen as a negative thing. And so, so I think it's important to see um, that which way you, you, how you look at it, you know, so how you look at it, there are aspects of it, it's very important to, to valuable, then there are aspects of it, maybe it's not so important to trying to preserve it. Human beings, we have kind of lost not to know what the value of life is. Um, we, are, we are confused between the need and wanting what we want. Our needs are very basic. If, if the whole human history and uh, whole uh, economic development, techno technological development, it's more based on our human needs. Probably we have less damaged the environment. But we, we did not base on our needs. We, we went with our wanting, uh, our greediness. And we are very much really like lost. Uh, so our happiness, basic happiness, in, we seek in the material, but those basic happiness is within ourselves, within the connection to the nature. If you are genuinely connected to the nature, you feel so much lively and happiness. If you genuinely connect with your family, 
there is naturally there is so much uh, happiness there. If you genuinely connect with your own yourself, there is a more genuine sense of happiness there. So many basic human needs are more in connection between to the nature among ourselves to ourselves than uh, accumulation of more material thing. Of course, we need to do. We are dependent on a material thing, but we went too far. And to the point, what we trying to get, we get, we lose much more. In the end, we lose much more than what we gain. I'm not for sure, okay, but I think uh, the reason why there are many people who are wanting to practice today's uh, shamanism, which 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 uh, are which is also some uh, some 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 of them are more related with uh, indigenous traditions like Native Americans, in uh, in South South Americans and in Mongolian and Tibet and different places. Um, maybe it's a very simple thing. Basi what people want, what really people want is the connection. Connection. They wanted to connect. They lost connection in their life. They lost connection to themselves. They lost connection to with their family, they lost connection, they lost trust in, in the politics and many, many things. They lost things, they're seeking connection. And in a way, a simpler or easier or more familiar way, a place for connection is to the nature. And, and also sometimes they wanted to connect with these spirits and they're also interested something more than themselves. What is that more than themselves? So, if, if they are, if they don't, if they don't understand the Buddha, they don't understand enlightenment, they don't understand the five pure wisdom, then they understand. They will still want to understand something. What is beyond me, ordinary me? How I can connect something beyond just this ordinary my suffering? So they are seeking for connection. I think maybe that is. A simple answer. Maybe, maybe it's too much. I'm answering maybe too simplified way. I'm not sure, but maybe that's one possibility.